Hey everyone, my name is Sean Arnold and welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Online Ranked Jewels. Today I'm continuing my plight of using Noble Knights, my newest and favourite deck to play with in Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Jewel. It's, it's just so much fun, it's really really great stuff here. I'm playing against Pharaoh 079 and we'll find out what he's using a little bit later on. Oh, maybe now since he's using Pot of Duality first and he's having to go first there. Uh, Pot of Duality, um, I, I think we, we all know what Pot of Duality does by now. Pot of Duality allows you to escape the top three cards of your deck. And those three cards are Swords of Ravine and Light. I hate that card. Mage Power, okay. And uh, Mirror Force. This almost looks like my Jay Beesman deck. I wonder if he's doing a variant of it. What's he going to add to his hand? I'm going to guess he's going to take Mirror Force. Uh, that's the one I would take, but... Uh, yep, he took Mirror Force too. Mirror Force is obviously the better choice because it, it removes cards of, from the field as opposed to just stalling or giving an attack boost. Um, interesting what he's going to be playing here. Uh, not quite sure exactly what it is. Now I know he has to put Mirror Force down there, so uh, and there's another card. Uh, is he going to put one more down? No, but he does have a Break of the Magical Warrior. Break of the Magical Warrior is an awesome monster. I, I used to love this monster. Uh, it's a shame that I don't see, get to see him anymore because uh, he's not as useful as he used to be, but he used to be such a great card. He, he has an effect where um, when he's normal summon, you can put a spell counter on him and he gains 300 attack. And when he gains 300 attack, he, uh, he becomes 1900 attack. You can then remove the spell counter if you want to to destroy a spell trap card on the field. He used to be a really, really effective card. Anyway, first of all, I'm going to play Reinforcement of the Army, see if my opponent responds to it. This doesn't seem like it, so I'm probably going to play the other one as well. Um, Reinforcing the Army is going to let me search out another Noble Knight. And the Noble Knight I'm going to search out is going to be... Let's think about it. See, at this point in time, I'm still not quite used to playing Noble Knights. Um, the build, um, which I am currently using today, is um, has been changed quite a bit since um, I recorded this video. And um, so at this point, I'm still pretty much learning. But um, one card which I can take is Noble Knight Brothers, which uh, allows me to special summon multiple Noble Knights in a turn. Which helps when it comes to XE summoning. But I'm um, not going to... I don't know... Should, I could do that first, uh, but I don't want to overplay too much. So what I'm going to start off with is Noble Knight Madrap. Let's see if I can get that going. And let's equip him with Noble Arms Galatin. Galatin uh, gives a Noble Knight monster plus 1000 attack, but uh, each turn they lose 200 attack. Um, it does add up a little bit, but it's a nice attack boost. And now um, Madrat's effect allows you to special summon one um, Noble Knight monster from my deck and then destroy the quick spell card on my field. Galatin now is going to revive itself and allow me to equip it to a warrior type monster on the field. So this time I'm going to give it to Noble Knight Dristan. And Dristan, when it is equipped with a Noble Knight card, allows me to destroy a face up card on the field. So let's get rid of that breaker. Now I have two level fours on the field. Which will allow me to go into a right summon for the following monster. And that is Artorius, King of the Noble Knights. He probably isn't supposed to be Artorius, but he looks so much like Artorius uh, from Dark Souls 1. I'm going to just call him Artorius. Artorius, King of the Noble Knights. And he's got an effect where uh, he can attach up to three Noble Knight, uh, Noble Arm equipped spells from the graveyard. And then I can activate uh, his effect. It, when I activate his effect, I detach one and I can destroy as many spells and traps on the field equal to the number of uh, noble armor quick spells that I have faced up on the field. Now, going into Dristan like that usually isn't my main play anymore. Normally, now I go into Boars and then um, search out more cards so that when I come to a rank summon, I can actually destroy more cards on the field. But that's something I didn't know at this point in time. So, uh, But if you're coming to build a deck like that, uh, I think the better play is to go into Boars, but sometimes there are reasons to bring out a card like Tristan because Boars does become a level 5 monster when uh, he's equipped with a spell card as opposed to Tristan which stays level 4, so if you want to go to a rank 4 summon, you can leave something like that in your deck. Okay, so my opponent's thinking about what they can do. I chose not to attack because I don't know what those face down cards are and I would rather not lose my, uh, my rank 4 monster. Um, a lot of people find uh, Noble Arms hard to deal with, but a lot of the more modern current decks can actually deal with it quite easily because they don't, uh, they have effects which don't target or they have effects which don't destroy um, a card, they uh, remove it from other means. So there's a lot of uh, way out to it. A lot of people say they hate playing against Noble Knights, but uh, it's really, really not that hard to beat them. 
I recently lost the rage to deck, uh, which created just overpowered it by special summoning lots of big monsters, and that's really easy in this day and age. Uh, similarly speaking, um, um, cards which can banish copies to the field, which can work really well against them, and uh, 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 Noble Dark Knights are very, very kind of glass cannonish. They don't run a lot of back row cards. And so uh, if you can get rid of their monsters, they usually can't protect it themselves. So uh, there's a lot of outs to it, but uh, it really depends if you have the resources to do so. As you can see now, Pharaoh 079 is playing some kind of magician pendulum deck, it seems. Um, as you've got Time Gazer going to his pendulum deck there. Um, that's an interesting concept. I haven't seen much of that in the UVA Legacy of the Of course, there's. Um, Pendulum Magicians, uh, but I don't really see anyone really dedicating this to Pendulum Magicians unless it's saying like put Magician cards in their Performer Powers deck. <coughs> okay, so uh, Fair, I've managed to clear most of Pharaoh's board, but um, in his end phase he decided to play um, MST to get rid of Galatin. Not really quite sure why he did that, I guess he didn't read the card, and um, Galatin's now going to just come back for free, which is one of his really, really great effects. I spoke about this in the last episode, but quick spell cards typically are a mega one because uh, when they when the monster is destroyed, they uh, they get sent to the uh, graveyard too. But uh, what's great about these quick spell cards is that they revive themselves if they are sent to the graveyard once. Um, they they go do it every single time, otherwise that would be stupidly broken. But they do it once, and that's really quite a cool because uh, it makes a quick spell card actually usable. Because when's the last time you really see quick spell cards outside of stat steel um, played in the deck? Okay, so um, managed to swarm the field thanks to Noble uh, Noble Knight, uh, Knight Brothers. Noble Knight Brothers allows me to special summon up to two Noble Knight monsters from my hand, but restricts me to only special summoning Noble Knights for the rest of the turn. I probably should have XE summoned because what I didn't pay attention to was that Noble Knight Brothers can only attack if there's only three monsters on the field, which is really kind of a weird restriction. So I should have used him for a rank summon and then uh, done some shenanigans with that and then attacked, but. Um, then again, I really, it might not have been best to. I could have gone into a rank for something such as another Artorius. But, uh, I mean, I'm gonna, it looks like I might do so now, but there really isn't a point because I, I haven't got any more quick spell cards in my graveyard. I wonder if I'm gonna back out and not do it. Nope, looks like I'm gonna do it. So here comes another Artorius. Again, I don't know, it really is a bit of a waste that I'm actually using this because uh, uh, I haven't got any quick spell cards to give him right now, but uh, it's okay. I can still use this effect to destroy spells and traps on the field if I wanted to. Okay, over to uh, Pharaoh's turn now. Drawing another card here. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the turn that he actually chooses to surrender. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, Noble Knights, again, is one of my favourite archetypes. I can't believe it's just such a cool archetype to play. Um, really, really fun. And if anyone wants to challenge me, feel free to add me to PSN.